how's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie247, back again. And uh, yeah, like Premier League football, I suppose, back again. Uh, Newcastle United back in action this weekend. Cannot fucking wait uh, to be heading back up to St James's Park. A massive game, you know, against Brighton. Beside us in the league, there's always the... Uh, the crossovers, isn't there? You know, getting promoted at the same time that they did. Uh, players who have represented both clubs on either side. The Minter thing, is it the Minter derby? I don't bloody know. Uh, but, you know, for me, cannot wait. Hopefully, touch wood. Um, you know, we're going to be getting one or two players back. Talk about definitely having a striker, which is a naughty, I know. Not just one striker, but possibly two strikers to be able to pick from. That's that's mighty impressive. No more false number nines and out like that. Two strikers, uh, Isaac and Wilson, back in contention for this weekend's uh, game. Uh, and um, some rumours as well about Lewis Miley. He's uh, obviously had a bit of a disaster, hasn't he? But um, I can't see it myself, not with the injury, not with uh, missing all the pre-season and everything. It'll take him a little bit, uh, a little bit of time to get uh, you know, up to, to full speed. Probably be the same sort of case with Wilson, but I do expect to see Wilson on the bench because he's such an important player for us, given the fact that, you know, five goalkeepers, two strikers, you know. Um, so a welcome boost to be able to have options from the bench. Brighton are missing a few. Brighton are missing a few, but they're going to have James Milner back. They're going to have Minter, who will have a point to prove, no doubt about that. Uh, but today's big news isn't about uh, Newcastle United. Well, it has a little bit of a knock-on effect. Um, talk about Eddie Howe going to England. Put all that to bed now. All the media darlings who've been flogging it. All your talk sport horse flogging the dead horse. We've said it a million times. Eddie Howe is not going to England. He settled at Newcastle United. He's mid-project. Yes, he's a passionate Englishman. But it's you know possibly the right job at the wrong time for him. So this puts it totally to bed now for the next 18 months or so anyway. Uh, Thomas Tuchel. So it'll be a uh, uh, guten tag and all that sort of thing uh, rather than uh, hello and welcome to the videos. Guten tag, uh, Herr Tuchel. Uh, this bits of German I can remember still from school. Uh, I'm not pretending to be uh, fluent. I've got friends who are, but nah, not me. A couple of words I can remember. That and the word for chemist, that's pretty much it, uh, to be honest. But yeah, Thomas Tuchel is the new England manager. And to be fair, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk at social media today, some pro, some against. It's really, really split on this one. A lot of people thinking it should be an English manager in, ta in charge of the English national team. Look, that's been tried. So you've got to give credit to the FA, I suppose, for running a thorough process. 10 people interviewed for the role. Um, and they've gone for what they believe is the best candidate, not the best person from a certain nation. They've gone for the best candidate to give themselves the best opportunity to literally take the next step, and that's from getting to the finals to actually winning something. And it is a, a major, major step as a Newcastle United fan. I think we all know that. Um, but, you know, time will tell. He's got this World Cup. Um, to be able to qualify for and uh, to do uh, well in, potentially win, uh, and then they'll take it. They'll take it from there. But from a Newcastle United uh, perspective, like I say, I'm just glad that all of the uh, the chatter and um, you know column inches, all of that sort of thing, will be put to one side, which has been continuously linking Eddie Howe and putting him as the favourite for the England manager's uh, job. And yeah, Tugel, I think it's a good appointment. Um, a brave appointment and look let's face it um yeah my mother who's got it was no football clue whatsoever but even she would be better uh than, than lee carsley because it's just been absolutely uh, horrific it's a continuation of the same old same old and what you do sort of think is given everything that come off southgate and you know unqualified this this you know the lack of being a winner uh, so on and so forward and, and then your continuation um, candidate which was obviously Lee Carsley um, I, I think it's nice to be able to go in a different direction to try something else because the, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome you know Southgate he might have been a nice man he might have been an FA man he might do great charity work he might 
be absolutely brilliant to go for a pint with. I don't know. To me, he seems a bit like a bit of a, a bit of a wet fart, if I'm being honest. I'm not being his greatest fan. I've said it all the way through, you know, a snazzy weight coat, waist bloody coat. Um no, it doesn't do it for me, you know, even when it was all the fucking rave. Oh, he's snazzy weight coat, waistcoat and all this sort of thing. No, I just I just saw him as a bit of a loser. He couldn't get the job done despite the talent at, at his hands because this is the thing. It's a very, very talented pool of players. But if you're going in there as a Lee Carsley or even a Gareth Southgate and these these pampered footballers, these multi-millionaires, these players who are playing for some of the biggest and best clubs from around the world are looking at a Lee Carsley and thinking, who the fuck exactly are you? You know, you can see it doesn't go on, but it's bound to go on, you know? They'll be sitting there thinking, my club manager's this, that and the other, yet when I come to international football, it's literally not as professional, you know, of, of a setup, not as good of a coaches. Um, and it used to be, back in the day, that, you know, you'd, you'd have your management, you know, you'd have all your managers that work in the uh, in the leagues, that get the European experience, that get the experience of winning cups and so on and so forward. And after serving the apprenticeship, they would then come into international management and it was a sort of like the last place you would go before actual retirement, international management. Nowadays, it's just a case of who's ever fashionable or whoever fits the system, you know, or come through the FA machine or anything else like that. It, it isn't like a reward for a career like done really, really well, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think it's lost a lot of its uh, luster. I think it's lost a lot of its uh, shine recently. Um, you know, international football, it's not where it, it used to be as much. The excitement's not there. Um, and, and basically, I don't know. I, I, I honestly think it's be one for the comments down below. I, I think club football and European competition has definitely overtaken international football. Let me know what you think down below in, in the comments. Hopefully, Thomas Duke will come back and just inject a little bit of life into the England team. A bit of an attack and flair. Um, and he can get the best and you know, hopefully he's able to make brave and bold decisions because although Southgate, you know, he talked the talk, he, he really, really did. Um, oh, you know, I'm not going to pick on names. I'm going to pick on what I see, the performances. I won't be scared to leave players out. And yet when, it, you know, it, it came to the crunch time, that is exactly what he did. He picked players with just name value, not on players who were actually uh, doing it week in, week out. Uh, in their respective uh, clubs, in their respective leagues, so on and so forward. <laughs> Southgate had his favourites, there's no doubt about it, and I just hope that uh, Tuchel comes in and I think everybody's given a clean uh, slate, a fresh start, but they're just told at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you are in the team, but yet your form drops off, or you are not fit enough, or whatever the reason may be, I, you know, that I will be, I will be able to, and I will be making changes. So it keeps everybody on the toes and it keeps standards high because I just feel that a lot of the England players have just dropped into like a comfort uh, space. You know, when it comes to international football, they're looking down at the manager, not looking up. You know, I don't think they're overly inspired by looking up and saying, I mean, I wouldn't be. If I was sitting there and looking across the uh, the room from Gareth Southgate and then Lee Carsley, I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I just don't think they'd have it if it was a, a fucking package that was delivered to them at the FA with it wrote on it. They still wouldn't get it. Um, and I, I still don't think they've got they had that level of motivation and respect from uh, what is a very, very talented team. With the players at his disposal, I honestly think they should have at least won one, if not two, competitions uh, now. Because, fuck me, that is, a, that is a talented group of players that you've got to be able to pick from. Uh, and sometimes he went too often with like uh, square pegs and round holes type job. And I've said before, and I'll say it again, I don't honestly think it works. You need your best left back and your best right back. You don't have to be, oh, well, I'll, I'll put a right back in at left back and uh, I'll play a central uh, defender in at midfield or I'll try and reinvent the, you know, reinvent the game. It's a very, very simple game. 
You know, just pick a bunch of players uh, and don't try and make, you know, the, the team and, and like sort of shoehorn certain players in and say, well, I've got to play him and I've got to play him and got to play him. We have a system. We have the players that, that, that come in and then there's going to be also be some really, really cracking players on the bench. And if the first 11 don't perform, then you've got players who are chomping at the bit to be able to come in. So the first 11 know that they've got to perform and they know that they're just not going to be all shoehorned in just so that, you know, all the superstar type names get a game. So, you know, the likes of a Foden, who is fantastic for Manchester City, um, I love him at Newcastle United. But internationally, he just hasn't done it. He hasn't scored the goals and you, you just don't know why. So you, you, you're thinking to yourself, a Foden might have to go on the bench to be able to accommodate somebody else. And that's the way that it needs to be. There's no right just to walk in. There's no right to be shoehorned into a team. You've got to earn it week in, week out. And then England game in, England game out. For me, you know, as much as we have got some players and it will be strange to be able to say some players sat on the bench who you know are absolute top level in club football but it's it's the way it's got to be he's got to be brave he's got to be bold he's not going to be everybody's uh, cup of tea he's going to have to have broad shoulders there's no doubt about it but it would be rather ironic that you know the person to bring the second uh, star on the shirt could well be a German there is a certain amount of irony to all that given the historical um, differences, you know, they are our oldest uh, enemy. You know, you're talking about from a footballing perspective, uh, Germany is right up there. So that team as a national team, with them, Scotland and the likes, that you just want to beat at the end of the day. So it'll be interesting to see if a German can deliver us that second world, you know, uh, World Cup. That would be absolutely, uh, utterly fantastic for for England to be able to do that. So we will see. He doesn't start until January the 1st, so I think the next lot of games after that might be until March. So he's going to have a little bit of a, a settling in period. He'll be able to get around all the grounds, all the clubs, see the players that he needs to see, and hopefully the likes of Gordon, Liveramendo, Lewis Hall, because there's a massive opportunity at uh, left-back there screaming. So hopefully he, you know, he gets a chance to go to all the clubs, see all the players, especially Newcastle United, and um, you know he sees the likes of those and maybe you know Nick Pope, so on and so forward. Uh, and it's an interesting uh, you know squad that he announces for his first international uh, game, and this obviously rode to the World Cup, which I think is is in America, isn't it? This time around, so interesting, interesting. But yes, back to domestic matters, and of course it is uh, Newcastle United against Brighton. Looking forward to it, as I touched upon uh, before getting back. It feels like ages since we've been uh, at home, but uh, I honestly I feel confident going into the game. Yes, it will be tricky. Yes, you can guarantee the old players sort of curse. I'm looking at Minter. I'm just thinking, please, it'll be Livermento possibly lining up against him. So I'll just have an absolutely uh, cracking um, game against him. And hopefully, like I say, we edge ourselves out because these games historically have been very, very close games uh, that have gone by. Um, so fingers crossed we get the points that's all that matters uh, but it's just nice that some of the injuries are finally starting to ease up it shouldn't be too long until we see the likes of Sven Botman back hopefully as well some sort of update soon about Jamal Lascelles nothing has been said um, about the skipper which is strange you would have thought maybe some sort of update video diary um, something from the club or from the player to let us know how he's getting on. He was expected to be back in January, so I assume it's still on uh, for then. Sven Botman seems to be seems to be closer and doing better from all the videos that he's posted, but I still can't see him back before next month for December, uh, realistically. So, um, you know, that'll be a massive, massive, massive plus when he does get back. Uh, and then we're getting more and more towards the end of the year and transfer windows and stuff like that. So, happy days. We're just glad to get back to the football. There's nothing else like it. Um, Premier League football, Newcastle United compared to England. It's like night and day. I've said before, it's like T-Rex and fucking Barney the Dinosaur. You know what I mean? They're both dinosaurs, but that is where the, the comparisons uh, stop. And I cannot wait to get back in the seat 
all the time uh, with there. Cannot wait to get back and to see the lads. Hopefully put on a bit of a performance, score a few goals. That would be nice. Um, certainly the performances have been getting better over the last couple of games uh, and I think we're just ripe and ready now to give some team a little bit of uh, a good hiding and I hope it comes in this game because we do have some tricky games coming up so let's hope we get uh, the three points, a couple of goals, no injuries and then we're moving confident into these next run of fixtures before the next set of international matches uh, which take place in November and those will be Lee Carsley's last games, thank fuck as England manager um, so yeah the, the, I think this is the last international break for a, a little while and thank goodness because it just it just disrupts the flow of everything doesn't it you know we have some big matches coming up both in the league and in the league cup everything crossed uh, for that one looking forward to it uh, greatly let me know your thoughts your predictions about this weekend I'm going to go for uh, a 2-0 Newcastle United a victory that would do very very nicely keep a clean sheet get that confidence uh, going as well and hopefully uh, Pope is okay because he, again he didn't play any minutes did he uh, during the games uh, and he had that little bit of an injury scare as well before the um, international break so hopefully Pope's okay uh, Tino didn't get um He's getting nowhere is he under, under Lee Carsley. He's just getting messed about for under 21s, pulled up to the senior squad, and then, you know, lack of minutes and stuff like that. But I just can't wait to see everybody back. Bruno as well. First thing I did this morning, wake up, is Bruno all right? Is he okay? Uh, making sure that he's all right. But lots of victories, uh, lots of good stuff, lots of positive, and hopefully everybody's coming back in a great frame of mind. Uh, even Mickey, he got uh, an important victory, didn't he? For, um, his uh, uh, Paraguay, isn't it? Um, Bruno obviously getting the, the win for Brazil. So, yeah, everybody should be coming back happy, infused uh, with that extra spark, spring in the step, and then let's put it in towards a good performance. Tenali was impressive as well, again, uh, getting in the thick of things for Italy as well. So, great things. A successful international uh, break but we now need to turn and concentrate our uh, full attention on these next run of hugely important games tough games for Newcastle United but let's think confidently and let's start off with three points this weekend against Brighton at St James's Park cannot fucking wait I need to get back home so uh, yeah <laughs> I'll uh, leave it there but yeah let me know your predictions and your thoughts about hey Tuchel and now is the new uh, England manager, let me know down below the comments and are you pleased that all this speculation about Eddie Howe can finally be put to bed? I certainly am. I was thousand percent confident he's still all, all along, but yeah, it's nice to be able to put everything uh, to bed and stuff like that, isn't it? So yeah, take care, subscribe to Magpie uh, 24 7, keep it tuned, and I'll speak to you later. <laughs>